first question I have for you, Lance, is how did you find out about the villages? What what compelled you to want to uh, do a documentary on this? Because usually this would be out of left field, but it's it's amazing and it's beautiful and it's so surreal all at the same time. Thank you. Well, th that, that thank you for your kind words. No, I, I um I I I'm from Florida, and I feel like it's you know it, somewhat impossible to grow up here without hearing about the villages. I um. You know, when I was 12 or 13 or something, I, I heard about, I, I had seen some statistic about it having like the highest rate of STDs. What? And as, as a 12, sorry, in, 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 in the Florida state, which is still, you oh. know, that's pretty, still, still pretty crazy. Um, and I remember at the time I was like, as a you know, 12 year old, I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. That's, uh, I've never heard of anything like that. And I think my, you know, maybe more juvenile interests back then, um, I kind of took probably some mental note of it. Later on, that 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 statistic I think has was largely debunked, and I you know didn't really think about it all so much. I left Florida, I went to college in Boston, and um, I started making another film, a short film about a guy living on a cruise ship, a retiree. He'd been living exclusively on cruises for 20 years, at real Caribbean cruise ships, and um, this idea of, of kind of like the, you know the, the lengths uh, people go to to kind of cocoon themselves in a fantasy world and the consequences of those actions, the, the, those themes kind of started percolating in my mind while working on that film. And right around the time I finished making that film, I, I found, um, there was an article that was talking about how the villages had, uh, you know, had quickly become one of the fastest growing cities in the country. And, um, you know, and, and there was suddenly, you know, 120,000 people, that have uh, that, that that left from the north and they were moving into this world that reminded them of their youth, the design to kind of simulate the 50s and the 60s. Um, and I just was fascinated by that. I, I you know, I, I think as uh, kind of as a way to explore that uniquely kind of American desire to, you know, to, to kind of escape reality, I think um, that was sort of the genesis of everything. And, you know, when I saw, I, I think I had also seen around that time this uh, advertisement for the vi villages. It was like an infomercial they made called come visit exclamation point. It was like a thing they put online. And I was just like all of these images and these marketing videos, like literally look like the opening scenes of blue velvet. And they look like the, op <laughs> they look like the suburbia and Edward Scissorhands. I was like, this place is just, you know, begging for a film to be made about it. And I was surprised that no one else had. So I, um, you know, I, 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 I didn't know anyone there and I just went, I went and I kind of, you know, thought I was just making a short film and kind of found myself in this, uh, you know, position where I suddenly had all these great characters and things were happening. And I was like, oh God, I guess I just accidentally fell into making a feature. Okay, how do I do this? And then I just, uh, you know, it took a few years and uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of help, a lot of, a lot of great collaborators. And, and, you know, here we are now. Now, I know that in, uh, you know, earlier on, I read a little bit about the villages, mainly because uh, there was a lot of Trump rallies out there, but you decided to focus on uh, some of these, some of the people that live there instead, which I, I love, but let's talk about some of these uh, characters in this, uh, but like Annie and Reggie. Um, I want to talk about Annie and Reggie because, well, let me, why don't you talk about Annie and Reggie for me? Yeah, I mean, you know, so so I, I guess before I talk about Anne and Reggie, I, I feel like even even more of like the I, I can get into sort of the, the the decision to kind of make something that was more um, you know related to like the personal rather than the political. And I, I think to me, um, you know, we, we had started shooting this film like 2018 to 2019, essentially like about off and on 18 months. Um, obviously, in my mind, I wanted to make something that. Uh, that, that, you know, I, I don't consider this film apolitical just because it doesn't necessarily like bring up, you know, Trump or anything like that. I, 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 I was more interested in kind of trying to find ways where I could explicitly, um, you know, or, or, you know, or implicitly at times call into question the nature of this like very conservative fantasy where people were, you know, um, you know, like people were delighting in, in the fact that this, you know, like for, for one, the place is so white it's like ninety eight point three percent white. There's so many visual kind of motifs when you when you look around the villages that just reminds you that you're in this kind of conservative mecca that so many people are are drawn to. So I, I was more interested in kind of exploring like the root of that line of thinking and something that I found like a lot more relatable um, rather than attempting to make something that could like condemn um, or you know kind of served a similar role that the news in my mind was doing a lot of the great journalism that was coming out of the villages. I wanted to make something that was sort of um, you know, this kind of, I want to make a film from the perspective of, 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 of the people who, who lived there 
that didn't fit into the fantasy. You know, they were supposed to, this place is designed to give you the, the best time of your life. A lot of these people that I had met were having some of the worst times of their life. They were, you know, the fantasy had turned into a nightmare. Um, and I thought that if I could follow people who were going through like real problems in this really unreal place, I would be able to kind of make a more authentic and interesting portrait of, of the community at large, because it wasn't just a movie that, um, you know, when the movie starts off, it looks like a dystopia. By the end of right. the movie, maybe it looks somewhere a little closer to, maybe it's still dystopian, maybe it's a little bit more utopian. I think there's, there's a, there's, I felt like there was a whole journey your perspective could have as an audience member from uh, the time the movie begins to the time the movie ends by looking through the you know, lens of these four specific people. But um, Anne and Reggie are, you know, are, 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 are sort of the heart of the film in some ways. You know, they're, they're a married couple who um, uh, are very different from one another. They moved to the villages uh, to, to kind of, I think, change their lives up, you know, sort of a similar desire that many people have when they go there. And as someone who really belongs to, I'd say, like the fray, you know, she, she's a pickleball player. She kind of fits the profile of like a typical villager. And Reggie, um, the calling that he's discovered, you know, or rediscovered back in the villages is uh, psychedelic drugs and like Eastern spirituality, which are two things that are very like not in keeping with this like conservative, uh, you know, fantasy land where people are just kind of playing bingo or, or being really active or, you know, um, you know, in a court doing the Corvette club activities or, you know, kind of belonging to this world where, you know, th there's, there's sort of this synchronized aspect of everything, this collective unit where you're all moving in sync and you're all talking about the same things and you're all dressing the same way. And here's a guy who, who, who just couldn't bear to bring himself to, 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 to actually fit into those things. So, I, I thought there was a lot of really, not only in their relationship, but I also think for what they had to offer about the world, you know, the fact that Reggie and Anne had gotten there and Reggie was kind of, if he had those inclinations already, it would, it, it already like, um, you know, it being in the villages deeply kind of brought him, you, you know, it brought him into the, into sort of a, a more of a deep exploration of, of drug use and other things. And I, I was interested in the root of, of, of why that was and why that happened and how they sort of managed to stay in a relationship with one another. I mean, and you you see the evolution of their relationship and the evolution of Reggie throughout the course of this film, which is quite remarkable, just, just watching the exploration of their relationship. Now let's talk about Dennis a little bit because <laughs> Dennis is a, a hustler at best. I mean, he you know, Dennis is it has it going on. Talk to me a little bit about Dennis because he, he's, he was searching for essentially uh, somebody to take care of him and to move in. He's living out of his van and and at times your heart almost breaks for him, but at the same time, it feels like once he gets his, his, what he wants, he always wants something else. So chat me up a little bit about Dennis. Yeah. You know, Dennis is, is, is a fascinating guy. You know, he, he, he's, he's an interloper. He doesn't exist in the villages proper. You know, he, 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 um, he moved from California to Florida on an expired license uh, because he, he got a DUI and he didn't pay for it. And, um, you know, he, he's someone who, who, who masquerades as a villager to sort of get what he needs, which in my mind is not sex. I think what he's after is actually companionship right. um, and a house and stability. Um, but yet he's also a very tormented guy in some ways too, where he, you know, he, that's, he thinks he wants that. Um, over the course of the film, he achieves and accomplishes more or less exactly what he's been looking, you know, going after, but um, it just isn't enough for him. And I think, something that's interesting about him is that this is a guy in his, in his early eighties, he's 83 and he still lives uh, a life of how maybe like a, you know, a, a, someone in their twenties would be right. living um, this, this desire. He, he describes it as comfort or freedom. You know, he, he can't have it both ways. He can't says, both ways. Yep. yeah. So, and, and I think there's actually something really um, fascinating about hearing a, an 83 year old say that. Cause I feel like it's a complete, I think, you know, most, representations of the elderly on screen usually are, 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 are more in the comfort zone instead of the freedom zone. You know, they're more uh, designed to kind of show these like, inoffensive adventures that, uh, that, that these defanged elderly characters are going on. And here's a, a guy who is more or less a man child who has never grown up and he's in his own kind of Peter Pan like fantasy where he's just kind of after the same exact things he's been after uh, his entire life, which is chasing women and, trying to, uh, you know, um, you know, try, trying to foster some kind of uh, hookup or romance. But 
um, I found it fascinating to be around him. And, uh, you know, I, I think especially given that he, he has a way of, 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 of talking about women, which is, I feel like extremely, uh, you know, patronizing and, and, and kind of pretty terrible. But um, I also, you know, he, he, and, and I think as a hustler, I think he's constantly just a survivalist and he's, I think his manners are like, you know, he's not, he doesn't care about that. He just cares about survival. Um, but then again, you know, he, when he has the luxuries he's after, he, 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 he just, he misses the other side of things. So I, I, I found that torment to be very interesting and kind of rich cinematically to explore. Now, um, real quick, I know that the, the other character that we have is Barbara and, and the thing with Barbara, and I love the film, uh, the film ends on her. And, and I almost, I felt for Barbara a lot. And I also got this sense of like, man, it's almost like watching a, a teenager going out on dates again. It, it, it's quite yeah. fascinating. You see the youthfulness and, and the shyness. I love Barbara. It talked to me a little bit about her because she suffers kind of a tragedy towards the beginning of the film. Yeah, you know, Barbara's someone, she's she's a widow, she's a new widow when we first meet her in the film. And and um, you know, she she she's trying to figure out who she is without, you know, a spouse. And I think uh she der derives so much of her identity from the man she was married to. You know, she she um she had no, I don't think if it, it was her choice, I don't think she would have moved to the villages. She she very much liked her life in Boston. It was her spouse's choice. And now that he's gone, um you know, she basically has to bear the brunt, you know, emotionally and financially of trying to support herself while she lives in this place that she never wanted to in the first place. So I thought there was something really interesting about her situation, almost kind of, she saw the world at first as more of a, a prison or something that she really didn't want to be in. She had no interest in engaging in any of the sort of artificiality of the social you know, conventions there, the culture there, the, the, the restaurants there. She wanted to kind of pretend as if she wasn't there. And then right. You know, the death of her husband really forces her to kind of get out of her shell and, and, and go out again. And like you're saying, I think, you know, having to kind of um, re-engage with the ways of dating, which she hadn't done in a long time. And it's almost like watching her do that almost is, it's very similar to watching, um, you know, uh, yeah, like a, how, how a high school, like a John Hughes movie would, would kind right. of function where you have a character who's trying to uh, go out with someone with a player and the player is interested, but maybe he's seeing other people and he isn't transparent about what's going on in his world. So th those things were also interesting to me because I think, again, it's like the village is, is, you know, it's a place that is designed to bring you back to that time. And, 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 and I think for better and for worse, I think the Barbara story really shows you um, that it can kind of you know, a world like that with so many singles at that age, it really does it's very conducive to, to kind of going back those ways. But it's interesting that, 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 that like your behavior may not totally change. You may change as a person, you may grow, you may mature, but the ways in which we engage with each other and try and start new relationships, like um, no matter how mature they are, no matter how old you are, like they still fall back on, um, you know, traits that we kind of inherited or learned as, as kids, uh, which is interesting. Well, Lance, it was a phenomenal film. I can't wait for everybody to check it out. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you and, and chat you up about it because these characters, they are so fascinating. And honestly, I almost want to go visit the villages, the village now. I mean, it, 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 sounds, it sounds pretty pretty out there. I mean, I'm, I'm all about it. Yeah, well, thank you. I, 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 you should go. And I, <laughs> I'd be curious to hear what you think of it when you go. Well, thank you so much, Lance. Take care. Thank you. Take care.